Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this video, we'll discuss about two symbiotic associations where one partner is a fungus. And those two associations, one is the lichen. And the second one we would be talking about mycorrhizae. So these are two where one uh, partner is a fungus and that is why we are talking about this under kingdom hanja. In lichens there is symbiotic association of algae and fungi. Now, algal partner, and as when we use the word symbiotic, that means this is a permanent association and both the partners, they get benefited out of each other. So, the algal partner is known as the phycobiont and the fungal partner is known as the mycobiont. Now, when we say both are getting benefited, that means if we are talking of algae, this algae is normally blue-green algae. That means they perform photosynthesis and fungi are saprophytic. So what is contributed by the algal part is the food and what is contributed by the fungal part is water and protection. So, the algae gets water and protection from the fungal part and the fungal partner gets the food which is synthesized by blue-green algae or cyanobacteria. So, in turn, both get benefited and this is a permanent association. When we talk of algae, we talk of three types of, sorry, uh, lichens, we talk of three types of lichens. First, they are called crustose lichens. Then the second ones are known as foliose lichens. And third are known as fruticose lichens. Crustose lichens, they are very flat and they can grow on any surface. That means even on a rock where there is no organic matter, no water and no soil. And that is why they are the pioneers when it comes to succession. So this is how these lichens are. And the reproduction. Reproduction takes place by formation of small structures which are known as soridia. Now what actually is a soridium? If there are these fungal hyphae and we are trying to draw the structure of a lichen, there is no organized structure it is just a lump like thing and in between there are these blue green algae so this is how the body of a lichen would be and then it may get organized a little bit to look like a leaf or a little vertical structure now during reproduction from here few hyphae and few cyanobacteria which are inside this they get separated and they come to lie on the suitable surface and they would start to grow there. And these structures are actually the soridia. So this is how reproduction takes place. Now let us talk about some important things um, about these lichens. So if we just have to write certain important things. Number one, lichens are used as pollution indicators that means if there is an area where we find a very good growth of lichens that means that area is absolutely pollution free and if there is any kind of pollution especially of sulfur dioxide that then in that area there would be absolutely no lichen growth so as soon as the pollution increases the lichens start to disappear and that's why we say that we use them as pollution indicators. The second one, crustose lichens especially 
act as pioneers in succession. Succession is where there is new vegetation which is going to start to grow. Now this succession can be on land, rock, very dry area. Then it is called primary succession when there was no vegetation, no organic matter. Suppose after a volcanic eruption, the lava cools down and on that cold lava now when succession starts, then the pioneer community is going to be crustose lichens because they can grow on a surface where there is no soil, no water and no organic matter. Now what is going to happen there on this rocky area? Suppose the crustose lichens are the first ones to grow there. They grow there. Their excretory material is little acidic which corrodes that cold lava. Their death and decomposition results into formation of organic matter and this corroded lava helps in formation of soil. So now there is soil formation, little organic matter also and if there is soil it will hold some water also. So this crustose will be replaced by some other community. This is how succession takes place. But they are the first ones to establish themselves in such areas. There are certain lichens from where or from which we obtain a color or a dye. For example, litmus. Litmus, which is used as a pH indicator, is obtained from a lichen which is called Rosella montagni. So, from Rosella montagni, we obtain litmus. Similarly, there is one more which is called orchid. This is also a dye which is also obtained from the lichens. There is one more useful thing about this and that is about a special lichen which is called Cladonia. This is commonly known as reindeer moss. And the reason why it is known as reindeer moss because these animals they feed on this Cladonia and if we have to add a few more, uh, say the fifth one, from the same Cladonia, antibiotics are also obtained. There is one more which is called Eusnea. This is also a lichen and which is used as expectorant. So there are many uses of these lichens. And they also help us understand how the symbiotic association works. Plus, very important pioneers in succession, especially when it has to start on land. Now coming to another symbiotic association, which is called mycorrhizae. This is also symbiotic. That means both the partners are going to get benefit. Now these partners, one is the fungi group and the second is the roots of higher plants, especially gymnosperms like pinus, cycas, etc. So there is a symbiotic association between the fungal hyphae and the roots. Now when we talk of this association, where are these fungal hyphae found? So on the basis of the location of fungal hyphae, mycorrhizae can be of two types. Ec ectomycorrhizae and endomycorrhizae. As the name tells us, ectomycorrhizae means most of the fungi or fungal hyphae remain outside. So we would see a network of threads outside the roots and very few hyphae are going to penetrate but they are not parasitic again both are going to get benefited out of each other. But if we see this we would find that if this is the root there would be a network of these hyphae 
and most of the hyphae would be seen outside. And endomycorrhizae would be that most of the hyphae are inside. So we would see only very few hyphae from outside but most of them are going to be on the inner side or inside the room. Now when we talk of this, then where exactly and how exactly the roots are. So after this mycorrhizal association, the roots, they are seen in three different forms. One, they are called corelloid roots, which are seen in case of pinus and cycus. There could be tuberous roots or there could be nodulated roots. Now what exactly is the difference? Association is same root and the fungus. Coralloid roots, they show dicotomous branching. That means every time the root is going to divide into two branches. Again the branch is going to divide into two and so on. So there would be a bifurcation every time. Whereas in these two cases, the roots, they are stumpy. That means they would have some kind of blunt end and they would form a mass-like structure. But association is same. Now coming to the benefit which these two partners get. Fungi, they help in absorption of water, and especially phosphorus and plant plants oh, let me write it here they provide food and shelter so one partner helps in absorption of minerals especially phosphorus and water and the other partner that is the plant because they are photosynthetic they would perform photosynthesis synthesize their own food and this food will be supplied to the fungus also. It has been found that in such kind of associations, if the fungus or these fungal hyphae are scrapped off, then the plant does not show normal growth. That means the growth gets stunted and that uh, can help us uh, draw a conclusion that these fungal hyphae are so very important for this plant for their normal growth. That means they must be doing something very important which is very much beneficial for their growth. One more thing is that in some epiphytes, mycorrhizae are also found. Epiphytes are the angiospermic plants which grow on the branches of tall trees in normally evergreen and rainforest where almost negligible sunlight reaches up to the ground. These epiphytes are small plants like orchids. So in order to have that sunlight for photosynthesis, they, are, they grow on the branches of tall trees and they have these mycorrhizal association. But it is not in all epiphytes. It is you can write in some epiphytes, but there also this mycorrhizal association is found. So these two, that is lichens and mycorrhizae are symbiotic and one partner out of these in these categories is fungus. In case of lichen, it is fungus and algae and in case of mycorrhizae, it is fungus and the roots of higher plants. So with this, we have completed kingdom fungi. Now from the next video we will take up